All right, today we're going to talk about another way of solving uh, systems of equations. Um, the previous video talked about substitution. You may have also tried to solve systems of equations by graphing. And today we're going to talk about and actually review systems of equations, solving them by elimination. So the goal is you have two equations with x and y in them and the x's line up vertically and the y's line up vertically but they may have different coefficients in front. Well the goal is to multiply either one of the equations or possibly even both of them by some constant so that either the x coefficients are opposites of each other or the y coefficients are opposites of each other. And so let's go over an example of what that would look like. We're going to look at this example. It is 3x plus 8y equals 19 and 4x minus 3y equals negative 2. So if you look at the coefficients in front of the x's, they are different. If I wanted them to be the same, um, I could make them 12s because 12 is the least common multiple of 3 and 4. If I wanted my y coefficients to be the same, um, I could make them both uh, 24s. One of them being a positive 24, the other one being a negative 24. Um, and then they would be the same. You have to remember if you want to multiply one of the coefficients by something, you have to multiply the entire equation by the same constant. Otherwise, you've created a different equation. So I'm either going to make the x's or the x coefficients uh, 12s or the y coefficients 24s. I've decided to make the x coefficients 12s. Actually, the top one, I'm going to make that x coefficient positive 12 and the x coefficient of the second equation, I'm going to make that negative 12. So that involves me taking the entire first equation and multiplying it by 4. That gives me 12x plus 32y equals 76. Then I take the entire second equation and I multiply that by negative 3, and I get negative 12x plus 9y equals 6. So what I can do now that I have the opposites um, as my x coefficients. I have opposites as my x coefficients. I can actually add these equations together. And if I do that, I get 41y equals 82. Okay. And so now what I've done is I've, cr I've taken two equations that have two variables and combined them to make one equation that has one variable. And so it is just a matter of dividing both sides by 41 and I get that y equals 2. Okay, well, I'm not done because I need to actually um, substitute that into, oh, I need to substitute that back into one of these equations. I guess I forgot to do that. So let me do that right now. I'm going to take this y equals 2 and I'm going to plug it into either equation of my choice. So let me do that right now. This will become 3x plus 8 times 2 which is going to be 16, and that will equal, if I can make that look like a 16, that will equal 19. Okay, and so now I've got an equation that just has x's in it. So I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides, and that will give me 3x equals 3. And then if I divide both sides by 3, I get that x equals 1. And obviously, I would plug that into the other equation and see if it worked. So I think that x is equal to 1. I think that y is equal to 2. So if I plug that in here, 4 times 1 is going to give me 4. And negative 3 times 2 is going to give me negative 6. So 4 minus 6 would give me uh, negative 2. Okay, moving on to one more example. Um, if I have 6x plus 4y equals 8 and 9x plus 6y equals 12, I can either make the x coefficients 18s or make the y coefficients 12. So I think I'm going to make the y coefficients 12. And just really quickly, if I multiply the first equation by 3, that's going to give me 18x plus 12y equals negative 24. And if I multiply the second equation by negative 2, that's going to give me negative 18 minus 12y equals 24. Now notice what happens as I add these together. I get 0 equals 0. And that means that's always true, so that means I have infinitely many solutions. If, on the other hand, I got something like 0 equals, I don't know, 8, 
Well, that's never true, so that means that this system of equations has no solution. So we need to be ready for those same three situations where there's one solution, infinite solutions, or no solutions. And we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow with some more examples. If you need help, please email me or send me a Facebook message or something on Twitter, and I'll see you tomorrow.